Welcome. This video is the first in a series of screencasts on how to use spreadsheets, especially in mathematics classes. This series has eight parts to it. Introducing spreadsheets, which you're watching now, formulas and cell references, user-defined formulas, relative and absolute cell references, charts and data plotting, trend lines and modeling, examples and calculus, and using spreadsheets and other software. Once you've viewed this video, you should go on and view the other videos in order. Be sure to have your favorite spreadsheet open and work along with the videos so that you'll get instant practice on the concepts under review. We'll be using Microsoft Excel throughout this series, but the videos are designed to be used with any full-featured spreadsheet, such as Apple's Numbers program, part of the iWork suite, OpenOffice Calc, or Google Spreadsheets. Just be sure to consult your user documentation for any differences in menu options or keystrokes that you might see here. Well, first of all, what is a spreadsheet and why would anybody use one? Well, back in the days before computers, people who needed to keep track of data, money amounts, names, addresses, and so on, used paper ledgers, like you see here, to organize their information. These are like standard notebooks, only they are split up not into lines, but into grids, which makes it easy to separate different kinds of data, such as names from times, or the dollar part of a monetary amount from the cents amount, and to perform calculations on data, such as adding up a column of figures. Ledgers are very simple paper devices that are well suited for data organization tasks precisely because they are so simple and flexible, and many people still use the paper versions. A spreadsheet is just an electronic version of a paper ledger. When we open up a spreadsheet, like I've opened up Microsoft Excel here, you see nothing but a blank page broken into a grid along with some formatting and menu options along the top. It's a blank slate into which we can put just about any kind of information we want. Scientists, for example, use spreadsheets to record and analyze experimental data. Business owners use them to record and track data on sales and revenue. Teachers might use them for a grade book. Families might use them to put in the family budget or to keep track of addresses and birthdays of their friends. What makes a spreadsheet really useful and a real improvement over the paper ledger, though, is the ability to calculate and analyze information right from within the spreadsheet. Now, as we'll see in later screencasts, in a spreadsheet, once you've entered in data, you can do things with it. You can make a pie chart of numerical figures, sort columns of names in alphabetical order, automatically sum and do statistics on columns of data, and more. In a world increasingly dependent on the careful tracking of information, spreadsheets play a central role in the lives and work of nearly everybody. We'll learn how to do some of these things later on, but let's first familiarize ourselves with the structure of a spreadsheet and how to enter in data. The boxes you see here in the spreadsheet are called cells. You'll notice that on the top and left edges of the screen are some letters and some numbers. We refer to cells using the letter and number of its column and row. Here, for example, is cell A1. Here is cell C3. And down here is cell D13. What we do with cells is enter data into them. And data can look like a lot of different things, but many times our data are simply numbers. If I want to enter in a number into a cell, I just click on the cell, like I've done A1 here, enter in my number, and hit return. You'll notice that the number, if I go back and click on A1, is not only in the cell itself, but it also appears in the formula bar up above, along with the uh, cell in which it occurs. We can also enter text into a cell. For example, it's the same process if I click on cell B1 here and enter in uh, some text, like I am doing now, and hit enter, I have now enter in textual information. It might be the case sometimes that the text itself is longer than the width of the, is longer than the, width of the column. For example, if I double click on that cell and type in some more things, the text is now longer than the cell itself. All of this text, once I hit enter, appears in B1, although it looks like part of it's in C1. C1 is actually empty. Uh, B1 contains all this text, and it's, it's a little bit too wide, so if I want to make my column wider, what I can do is go take my cursor and move it up to the little line between columns B and C. When I do that, the cursor will change shape. I can click, and while holding down the mouse button, just drag this column over, and now uh, the column is a little bit wider, and it contains all that text. Sometimes you want to enter in data that has a particular format, like currency. Now, money, of course, has a certain format to it. If I have a dollar figure in mind, I always want there to be a decimal point with two places to the right of the decimal point for the cents, and I want to have a dollar sign symbol. 
if I've entered in a dollar amount, for example, if I want 42 to actually mean $42, I can format it by clicking on the cell, then right-clicking to bring up a menu, and down here I have Format Cells. I click on this. It'll bring up another menu, and there are several things I can choose, and one of them is currency. There are several ways I can format this. I just click OK, and now it says $42. Now, formatting does require a certain amount of care. For example, what happens if I want to in enter in the fraction one-tenth into a cell? Well, let's try it. If I go to A2 and type in one-tenth, see what happens. Hmm, it thinks it's a date. It thinks that I meant January 10th. Now, if I really wanted one-tenth, I can go back and reformat by clicking on the cell, then right-clicking and choosing Format Cells. And I want this to be a number, so I will just choose a number. And it will change it to uh, a number amount, but it's not the number amount you expected to get. So sometimes formatting can give you some strange results. If that's the case, you might just want to think twice before you enter in things like fractions. And instead, just enter in 0 0.1 and do the formatting for it. So that's all for the first video. You now know what a spreadsheet is, how to refer to cells, and how to enter in and format different kinds of data, and how to be careful with formatting different kinds of data. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use cell references to do automatic calculations on data. Now before you go on to the next video, here's a trivia question for you. What was the first computer spreadsheet application made for public consumption? When was it released, and what kind of computer was it made for? See you in the next video with an answer.